Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss how you can connect one EC2 instance which is basically launched in a private subnet and DynamoDB. Okay, so generally DynamoDB is accessible via HTTP connection, okay, which required internet service. Now suppose you have launched one particular EC2 instance in a private subnet then it is not accessible via internet, right? So what is option to connect with DynamoDB? The option is you can use NAT gateway, that is one stuff. But NAT gateway basically require one elastic IP, which is bit expensive. So instead of that, what we can do, we can use VPC endpoint, okay? Which will create a private network to connect with the DynamoDB. And if your DynamoDB is available in the same region where your this particular subnet is, then only you can able to connect right that is obviously one condition of vpc endpoint that the service what you want to connect via vpc endpoint that should be available in the same region where your vpc is right so that is fine so what we are going to do in this video first of all this particular setup is kind of what we are following since our past some of the videos where we have already configured one vpc in ohio region then we have created two subnets okay and we have assigned two route tables with individual subnet with the route table which is assigned to public subnet they are igw or internet gateway is there using which we can connect to internet and there is another route table which is private route table which is attached to the private subnet and that is not connected to the internet right so if we launch some particular ec2 instance in the private subnet then there is no direct way to enter in this private subnet so what we generally do via internet we first enter in this public subnet ec2 and from this ec2 we can enter in this particular private subnet ec2 because they are local with respect to each other they are coming under same vpc right that's why connection is possible from this ec2 to this particular ec2 right so that's how we can enter in this ec2 and then what we will do we will try to connect with dynamodb using vpc endpoint from the private subnet ec2 instance that's what our lab experiment is going to be okay so let's try to understand step by step so as a first step what we are going to do we are going to create an iam role which is having dynamodb and s3 access okay why s3 required i will be telling you that is we will be having a data set okay suppose this is our data set which is a json data this data set i will be providing in the description box or in the comment section so that you can try parallelly with this video okay so that data we will be uploading in a bucket which is in same region ohio region and using vpc endpoint that s3 json data first we will be downloading in our this private subnet ec2 and then we will be running a python code and that python code will make insert in a dynamodb table which is present in ohio region only okay right that's what our plan is so without any further delay let us directly jump into the experiment so as a first step what we will do we will create a iam role which is having basically dynamodb and s3 access so that we no need to configure access key and secret key this kind of stuff okay anyway those are less secured right so always you should try for role based authentication okay in cloud computing domain so first i will choose ec2 okay then i will go to next and then here what i will do i will choose dynamodb okay dynamodb full access i'll be giving and apart from that i also need s3 as well right so s3 full access also chosen i will go to next and then here i can give the role name as demo demo testing dynamodb s3 okay that is our step one okay and then here we are going to create the role okay that's all so first step is done what is the second step the second step is we are going to launch ec2 instance one in private subnet one in public subnet okay so let's do that so i'll be going back to aws management console and from there i'll be switching to ec2 okay and then here i will launch an instance i will take linux machine and give this t2 micro only i will go to next and then here i will choose our virtual private cloud and this one we want to launch in public subnet and auto assign public ip yes public ip is required 
because this one we are trying to connect via internet directly so public ip is required and apart from that i'll be choosing the im role also okay so what is the im role we created that is demo testing dynamo db s3 okay that one here we are going to choose okay that is done and then we will go to next 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 security group i can keep as it is and then here i can go to launch okay so here i can launch the instance in our public subnet right that is basically step one and then what we will do we will do same for private subnet is it okay So this time I am going to choose again the same VPC whatever we created but this time we are going to choose the subnet as private subnet okay. So if you check our VPC already in our previous demo we have created one VPC right. So that one only we are reusing. If you see here if I go to your VPCs here you will see that this is the virtual private cloud what we created right. And it is having the CIDI range is 10.0.0.0/16, and in this particular IP range we have created two subnets. Okay, if you see, one is private subnet B, one is public subnet A. Okay, we have given the name such that we can easily understand what is private subnet, what is public subnet. All we have done, we have created two route tables. If you see the public route table, which is basically associated with our public subnet, here see. IGW is attached, internet gateway is there, that's why internet connection is possible, right? And if you see the private route table, only simple local connection is there, that's all. So, internet connection is not directly possible, okay? So, what we will do, we will basically first launch the both EC2 instance and then as there is no direct way to enter in this EC2, so for that purpose, First, we will enter in this particular public subnet EC2 via SSH from internet and then because this EC2 and this EC2 are in same VPC, so they are local with respect to each other. So, I can do SSH from this particular EC2 to this EC2, right? That's what we are going to do. So, here in this particular case, we are launching our private subnet EC2. So, we no need to specify any public IP, right? And then here I will go to next. I will go to add tags, configure security group. Here, I need, might need to ping the private subnet EC2 from the public subnet EC2 to check whether connection is working properly or not. So, I am choosing ICMP also as well as SSH also there. Now, SSH, what is the IP from where I want to connect? That is basically from public subnet, right? So, I will be going to our public subnet and I will be taking the public subnet CIDR, okay? So, here CIDR I have copied. And I'll be pasting that here simply. Okay. I'll go to review and launch. And let me just make sure one thing. I have taken the IEM role. See here, IEM role for this particular EC2 also. We have to choose the DynamoDB S3, whatever we created, right? That's what I was just confirming. And then here, we can launch the instance okay that is also done launching instance done now what we will do in this particular private subnet ec2 we will be entering from the public subnet ec2 right so public subnet ec2 we can enter via putty in ppk file format right but to enter from this public to private subnet ec2 we need that pem file so as a first step what i will do i will transfer the pem file in ec 2 a via winscp so that we can use this particular pem file to enter in our private subnet ec2 okay so here i will go back and then here i will be taking our public subnet ec2 instance ip address and here i will be doing winscp okay Host name I'll be putting default username is ec2 hyphen user for Linux machine and here I'll be choosing my PPK file. Okay. So here we are entering in our public subnet ec2 instance, right? And here we'll be transferring our PEM file, whatever is required to enter in the private subnet ec2. That is done. That is the one step. And then what we will do, we will try to enter in this public subnet EC2 via putty. Okay. I will paste this one. I will go to SSH authentication. 
I'll browse this. I will open this one. Yes, and then here I will do PC2 hyphen user. Okay, because that is the default user ID. That is done. Here we have entered in our public subnet PC2. Now if I do ping google.com here it will start working perfectly fine because here in this particular ec2 in whatever subnet we have launched that subnet which is associated with such routing table which is having internet gateway access okay that is done right now what we will do we will be going to our private subnet ec2 and i'll be taking the private ip address so there now we need to enter so here if you see in our public subnet ec2 if i do ls here that file is there which is required to enter in our private subnet ec2 right so i will just select that particular private ec2 and i will click on connect okay then here if i do chmod here we can put that one and then here i can do ssh also okay before doing ssh if you want to confirm whether you can able to ping this particular private subnet ec2 from the public subnet ec2 or not you can do basically ping this address okay see it is also working right that's fine now we will do ssh and here i will write yes and here we have entered in our private subnet ec2 okay now what is the next step we have done ssh in our private subnet ec2 now what we will do we will configure our aws region okay because this time we are going to do experiment with our DynamoDB, right? Now, generally we need access key, secret key, and region name, default region. Now, because we have configured the role level access in the EC2 instance, so we don't need to specify access key and secret key, but we need to mention the region, right? So, what I will do, I will execute AWS configured. And here access key I no need to give, secret key also no need to give because IEM will handle that. All I will do, I will specify the region name which is US is 2. Because all our experiments we are doing in OHIO region. The VPC endpoint also we are going to create in OHIO region. That's why we have to create the DynamoDB table also in OHIO region. Because in VPC endpoint if you are using it then you have to make sure the AWS services are also available in same region. Right? So here I will do that and I will end. Okay? That configuration is done and as a next step what I will do, I will create a DynamoDB table in the same region which will try to access, okay, from the private subnet EC2 instance, okay. So here I will go to DynamoDB, okay. And then here I will go to create table, demo testing, row number, is the partition key, okay perfect and here it is created okay so once that is created now what we can do we can execute aws dynamodb list table command okay how it will work access key secret key not required because in im we have given dynamodb full access to the dc2 and the region we have already configured in aws configured right so that way if we execute this we should be able to get the results let us see okay but see it is not working why it is not working try to understand okay because your dynamodb in ohio region that's fine but dynamodb is accessible via internet via http connection okay and in this routing table no such configuration is available which know how to direct the traffic for http connection because it is launched in a private subnet right that's why here this particular stuff will not work so for that what we will do for that we will create vpc endpoint and we will do the experiment okay so as a next step we will create a vpc endpoint for our dynamodb as well as for s3 and i will attach those to our private route table okay let's do that so i will go to our vpc okay and then here i will go to endpoint i will create endpoint and then here i can give maybe dynamodb endpoint okay and here i can choose dynamodb Here, this is the DynamoDB gateway, what we have chosen, right? And then here we have to choose for which VPC we want to create. So, virtual private cloud, what we created. So, I am choosing that. And then here we have to choose route table, okay? So, this particular virtual private cloud, we are creating in our private subnet. So, we have to choose our private subnet route table, right? So, we are going to choose that private route, okay? 
Once that is done, I want to give full access and I will create the endpoint. Okay, that endpoint is created. Not only that, basically here what we will try to do, we will create a Python code to insert some data in this DynamoDB table using UPC endpoint, right? So we need some data to enter in DynamoDB table. So for that, suppose we are going to use this JSON data, okay? Now we have to bring this JSON data in our private subnet EC2 instance and then using a Python code we can iterate in the JSON data and we can make an insert query in DynamoDB using Boto3, right? Now the question comes how we can insert data in this private subnet because there is no direct way to send the data file JSON file, right? So what we will do, we will upload that in S3 bucket and using VPC endpoint we will download that JSON data from S3 to our this private subnet EC2 and from that local downloaded JSON file, we will try to insert in our DynamoDB using the DynamoDB VPC endpoint, right? So that's why we need to create one VPC endpoint for our this S3 instance as well, okay? So I will do that, right? So here I will go to endpoint and then here I will go to create endpoint and here S3 endpoint demo, okay? So here I can search for S3 and here I can choose the gateway for our US S2 OHIO region same VPC I am going to choose basically and route table again this case also private route table okay full access I am providing and here I am creating the endpoint okay so both endpoints we have created now if you go to route tables and if you go to private route tables earlier where only local connection it was allowing now two more entries is coming one is making sure if DynamoDB request is coming then it will send to VPC endpoint for DynamoDB Another entry will make sure if request is coming to S3 which is generally accessible via internet then from the private subnet if the request is coming to S3 then it will forward to VPC endpoint for S3 and that using a private network it will connect the S3 to that private EC2 instance okay. So that's why two configuration came here right. So here what we will do now we will go to our AWS S3 okay. And here we will upload the JSON data, what we want to actually insert in our DynamoDB table, what we created, okay. So I will share you with the JSON data so that you can also do experiment parallelly with this video. Maybe I can use one existing bucket, maybe let me use this one and here I will upload the data file, okay. So here I, this file is getting uploaded. So if I go back to my private subnet EC2 and I do AWS S3 LS here because that S3 full access this particular EC2 instance have that's why we are able to get the LS data. Okay. Now if I do the, if I go to the bucket here we are getting this particular file which is our requirement. Okay. This JSON data we want to download in our private subnet EC2 and using Python we want to basically upload that in DynamoDB. Okay. So we'll do that. So what is the step 9? Step 9 is here you can see execute the same code again AWS DynamoDB list tables. Okay. Let us do that now. So if I do now see you are getting the response. Earlier we were not getting but because this time we have created the VPC endpoint that's why demo testing whatever DynamoDB table we have created here it is able to list. Okay. That's also perfectly working. Okay. Now here what we are doing use VPC S3 VPC endpoint to download the data from S3 to local. So whatever in S3 we have uploaded that one we will try to download. Okay. So this is the one. So here if I currently do ls nothing is there but if I do pwd here this is home EC2 user right. So here I can do aws s3 copy this particular file to this particular location only home EC2 user okay. And then here it is downloaded okay download done. If I just do clear and then here if I do ls here you will be able to see ants combe dot json is there i can do this cat ants combe dot json okay and here i can see the json data okay that's how basically you can take some data in our private subnet ec2 instance first you upload in s3 and using s3 vpc endpoint you can download in your private subnet ec2 right that step is also done now what is the next step 
we have to execute this particular code so let us try to understand what we are doing here okay so here first we are importing boto3 and json we are creating the boto3 resource we no, no need to specify any access key or secret key because ec2 has that access okay that for dynamodb we want to create the boto3 resource region is us is 2 because as you know our dynamodb table is in ohi origin and then here i need to pass the table name okay so what is the table name what we created so here also we have seen right aws dynamodb list table which is demo testing okay i'll be taking that name and i'll be pasting that here okay and then here what we are doing we are reading that json file whatever we downloaded from s3 using s3 gpc endpoint and we are reading in records okay then we are iterating in records and here we are basically inserting the data in our dynamodb table that is this particular one demo testing okay so we will do that now so i will insert in python 3 okay we have inserted entered in python 3 let's execute this to import first okay so if we do that here it is throwing an error module not found no module name boto3 okay so what is happening basically if you see our diagram currently we are launching our python in private subnet ec2 here boto3 is not available that's what error it is displaying okay that's fine so what we will do now we will do p install boto3 okay pip command not found okay so actually pip3 is there right so we have to do pip3 install boto3 okay so let's do that as you can see here the as this import is not working so step 12 is pip install boto3 or i can say in a better way pip3 install boto3 we have to do but it will not work again why because this particular diagram if you see currently we are in private subnet ec2 and pip install required http connection which is not available right only we have allowed private connection using dpc endpoint to the dynamo db but http connection is not there from this private subnet but we need that connection at least one time so that we can launch this boto3 and then we can delete the unnecessary stuff that's what we can do right so for that what we have to do we have to launch one NAT gateway Using that NAT gateway, we will be basically connecting to internet and we will do the PIP installation of Boto3 in our private subnet and then we can delete the NAT gateway, okay? So that's what our next step is. So here you can see create a NAT gateway to install Boto3 and do PIP install Boto3 again. That is PIP3 install Boto3 again. So all I will do, I will launch a NAT gateway and as you can see in this diagram, it is clearly displayed. NAT gateway you have to launch in public subnet. So all I will do, I will go to AWS, I will go to VPC and here I will go to NAT gateway, okay. So I will create a NAT gateway in our public network, public subnet, okay. For downloading Boto3. So if you recall with theory, I have told you, right, that sometime it might require in your private subnet you need to install some packages or you need to access some external website that time you can use NAT gateway right so here NAT gateway we have to launch in our public subnet right so I am choosing public and elastic IP we need to allocate so here it is allocating one elastic IP that is done and here we will create a NAT gateway okay so here our NAT gateway is created perfect okay so our NAT gateway is basically currently in pending state soon it will be created let's wait for a couple of seconds so if you see our actual this particular private subnet ec2 if i do ping google.com now it is not working okay because it is in private subnet see all packets lost but now i will attach the NAT gateway with the route tables of our private subnet ec2 okay so i'll go to private route as you can see in the diagram so here NAT gateway will be attaching with this particular route table so that if this from this particular private subnet ec2 some traffic is trying to reach out to internet it will go to NAT gateway okay that's all we want so here what i will do this is our private subnet route table i will edit the route table i will add the rule internet connection 
I want to do via NAT gateway and this is our NAT gateway I will save the changes okay that is done now I will do ping google.com again okay see now it started working because of NAT gateway that means we can do pip install also quickly let's do pip install and then we will close NAT gateway to make our backend again secured okay so pip3 install boto3 okay So here it is done. Once that is done, what I can do? I can delete the NAT gateway. Okay, because that is no longer required. Perfect, right? So here it is deleting. We have to wait a little bit. So here our NAT gateway is deleted. Now we can release our Elastic IP. Okay. So here I will go to Elastic IP. And here I will go to release our elastic IP. Okay. So here our elastic IP is released. Now again we are back to perfectly secured network. Now if I do again ping google.com in our private subnet EC2, again it will not work. Okay. If you see 100% that it is lost. Okay. Perfect. Just for this installation of Boto3, we did that step. Okay. Once that is done, we delete the NAT gateway and run the code again. So here what I will do. I will enter in python3 again and then here I will go back to my code I will just copy the code okay this particular whole stuff right and then here see this time we are not getting any error that's the beauty okay and here what we are doing we are iterating in that whatever file we have read and we are inserting the data in DynamoDB before that let me just show you here if I go to DynamoDB here, explore table items if I do, currently it is having no data, right? Here it is done. Now if I just run this particular code and hit enter, here it inserted the JSON data and now if I go back and refresh it again, here you will see the data is perfectly getting inserted, okay? So that's how, without directly connecting to internet from a private subnet EC2 instance using VPC endpoint, you can basically connect to your DynamoDB if it is in same region, okay? And this connection is happening via private network, not via internet. Generally, DynamoDB S3 all are accessible via public network. There is HTTP connection, right? But here we are not using that HTTP, but rather here we are using the VPC endpoint to get the access, okay? Now, if you delete this particular VPC instance, then it will again not work okay so let me show you that also so what i will do i will go to vpc instance vpc endpoint okay and then here for dynamo db whatever we created that one we will be deleting suppose let's delete this one okay let's delete that that is deleted right and now if i try to execute same code again it will not work See, in the first record itself, it got stuck because first we are printing the record, right? So that's why it got stuck and it will not make a single entry because this particular private subnet EC2 instance has no longer access to DynamoDB because we have deleted the VPC endpoint, okay? So in the interview, this is a very popular topic, not only in interview, in your practical projects in industry also, if you are especially working in finance domain where we need to make sure our data is secured, we are connecting our EC2 or EMR instance with our DynamoDB or database very securely, that time this VPC endpoint is a very helpful stuff and I hope you have understood the power of it. This is all for my this video, the code I will be providing in the description box or in the comment section. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment, subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.